This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We are talking with Dr. John Delatore today. Talking about uh, what exactly surprises someone like John in a case like Lori Vallow Daybell. He's a licensed psychologist. ResolutionFCS.com is his website. John, I got to ask you that that very question. In a case like this with Lori Daybell, are you ever surprised by what comes out in trial? Well, I think generally there have been times when uh, testimony is given and then I hear something that I was completely not expecting to hear. But when it comes to the Daybell specifically, I don't know that any, I don't know that there's been any revelation that I hadn't maybe anticipated would be coming. Like to me, everything has seemed relatively consistent with what I know of Lori and Chad Dave in terms of who they are as people and, and the relationships that they have with other people. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's always weird to hear stuff, but I don't, I don't know that anything has really jumped out at me and, and said, can you believe this happened? I'm like, yeah, I absolutely can believe that that that's how that went down. Yeah. I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I, I think some of this is we've heard little snippets here and there of, of pieces of conversations over the last couple of years, but now to hear some of these things in their entirety, I, I guess it makes it that much more real and just how far some people dig into their perceived reality when interacting with others specifically on that phone call between uh, Lori and summer uh, what what's your take on that i mean the it was creepy it was disturbing just the way and the ability that Lori had to uh, to to carry on with that conversation as her loved one her sister begs and pleads for her to come to reality and and understand what's going on well, I'm going to I'm going to go back to the phone call that she had with uh, Colby Ryan, sure. right, her son, who did who did nearly the exact same thing yeah. to me. This is to me. Lori has always been someone who if if threatened, right, if, if confronted, if challenged, is only going to fall back further into the ideas that she has, whether they're delusional in terms of. Uh, mental illness or whether they're just delusional because people don't accept this as a a viable religious doctrine. Whenever she's challenged, she'll only fall back into it. You cannot snap her back into reality because her reality is filled with light and dark and zombies and, you know, bodies needing to be burned or or bound in order to be, I, I think, I think what people are really, what, what I think, Court watchers are watching now and family members and friends who have either fallen victim into the coercive techniques that both Lori and Chad have or have been trying to to pull them out of these kinds of things. I think what what we're all seeing is that this isn't necessarily faked, right? There are some things where that are probably more exaggerated than others, but I do think Lori has fallen into some of these traps where she has no idea where she has no way out other than to believe them. And it's it's hard, I think, for a logical person to see. And I think that's where the desperation comes in with uh, Summer and Colby and trying to trying to pull her out. But the, the reality is, is that she's so far deep, there was never going to be a time to pull her out. And I, I understand that, and I, and I, I totally agree. What I wonder about with some of the more detailed evidence that's come out in the last week, uh, specifically um, some of the data on purchases and uh, various items and looking up certain things like life insurance policies on children. It seems there's moments of just pure, intense, uh, nefarious activity or nefarious activity with intent of looking some of these things up for financial gain. Th- those Some of those moments or movements on their part don't necessarily seem to be that of someone who believes their children are zombies. It seems to be someone who wants to profit off of their death. Uh, and the immediate response is, well, how do we get some money out of this? How do we do this or that? So is this someone where they're going back and forth between 
lucid moments of, well, I mean, evil lucid moments of trying to profit. Uh, And and then at the same time, a moment later, they're zombies. This had to happen because of uh, whatever religious beliefs they're carrying. I think I think that is certainly one interpretation that a person can vacillate between these sort of these moments in which they are what shall we we'll call this yeah this evil lucidity versus someone who is still wrapped up uh, with delusional thinking. But my challenge to that is why do the two things have to be separate? Is it possible for someone to be completely delusional, but act in their own best interest, but engage in behaviors that would make it so that they somehow benefit? from engaging in a problematic behavior. Uh, Yeah. And I think most times people do that. People are enraptured with a delusional thought, but still find ways of engaging in uh, a criminal act or or what someone can see as a rational act, like, well, getting money. You know, it's one of those things where people still need money. And whether they believe that apocalypse is coming and, and, you know, children are, uh, they're zombies, or they're simply trying to conspire in order to live a free life without the trappings of children. Either way, people need money, and people find ways in which to get that money, and they have to justify doing so, particularly if it's uh, it, they're, they're going to harm someone. They have to justify it. So I think in some ways, yes, they're trying to set it up where they're going to get money, But the justification is, well, the children are zombies now, so it's not like we're doing anything. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. John Delatore, psychologist, thank you so much for weighing in and giving us some of your insight onto a case that none of us seem to be able to make a whole lot of sense out of. If you guys like the podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates and discussions on the cases we're following for you. You can get an ad-free experience through Apple Podcasts right now. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.